we're going to just start out with good old SOLIDWORKS, in this case 2017. We're going to create a new part. As soon as we click the new part icon, select one of our templates, we're prompted if we want to manage this in Team Center. Of course we do, so we'll bring up the initial save form, select an item ID from Team Center, give the part a new name that we want it to have, and then we can define a couple of properties if we want or add them later. And then we can put this in uh, a specific folder that we want as well. So what this does is creates a placeholder. It's kind of just for the empty part that we're going to create. Now we can add some geometry to that part. In this case, I'm going to create just a kind of a little wrench that you might get if you buy uh, some simple product from a store. I'm going to make it about uh, add some dimensions to it. I always like things to kind of be a little bit real anyway. And then we'll adjust these dimensions to be a little more uh, accurate, if you will, or precise to reflect the design. All right, now we have the part done. Make it about three and a half millimeters thick. So we've got a little something to work with here. And now we've got a great design. At this point, we're going to go ahead and save it to Team Center. So we've popped up here the Team Center panel. Uh, this displays both the Team Center view of the part as well as the view of the part in the local file system. When we save it to Team Center, it shows us a bunch of properties associated with that part. Of course, this is all configurable and allows us also to define uh, what we want to have happen after we save this part to Team Center. In this case, we've got the properties you can see. And when we save it, we're also going to put it through a workflow. And what that does is kind of locks it down so it can't be changed. Uh, easily. In this case, the workflow is just a real simple one, kind of a personal workflow, so I can come back to this wonderful design in the future. Taking a look at Team Center, let's see what this looks like there. You can see now we have an item, number 61, with the name Wrench, all these things we, we created automatically. It created a JT representation of this part so that anybody using Team Center who's authorized can take a look at the part. We also have a thumbnail image of the part and all the properties that we created. Okay, now we want to make this design, refine it a little bit. So we're going to create a revision of this part so we can make changes to it. And you'll see the little checkered flag go to now a checked out symbol, indicating we can now make changes to it. In this case, we're going to make a drawing of this part using a A size format. We can then add our views to this drawing. And once we have uh, multiple views assigned here, we can go ahead and import the dimensions from the solid part, therefore kind of completing the whole drawing here, tying it together. Really, we're looking at uh, kind of implementing some model-based design here. Okay, So the drawing and the part are all linked together, pulling properties from each other. Move that dimension over where it's a little better. OK, so now we have a drawing and we have a part. In this case, they're going to be managed in the same item revision inside a Team Center. What that really means is we're going to we're going to keep them locked together. So if I change one, I'm going to change the other. As we did before, we're going to give it a simple workflow to lock it down. Uh, this is not a production release. Don't want to imply that. It's just simply uh, saving it so I can come back to that uh, in the future if I want to. So I got A and B here. Could be one and two. You can name them anything you want. So this panel shows the status of it in Team Center. The other panel shows what it looks like on the files on disk. So here we've made some, we've got a wrench, but it's a little hard for this wrench to do anything except act as a tongue depressor right now. So let's make a change to this and, and let's put a little hex in the end of it so that we can uh, actually put it on top of a, a bolt if we wanted to. So we're just going to cut a hexagonal hole in this drag out the hexagon. Again, and staying with some precision here, let's go ahead and add the dimensions across the flats so we know how big a, a wrench we're going to need here. Uh, we'll make this 15 millimeters. Okay, and at this point now we've got a wrench that's got a little more uh, interesting aspects to it. Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, make it a different color just to kind of make it different inside of Team Center. 
and then we can check and see that the drawing has been updated here. So now we see the drawing. Add those dimensions also into the uh, into the assembly here, or into the drawing here, and we're good. So both both items are shown checked out on the form here. We're going to go ahead and check them in. Again, run them through a workflow just to kind of preserve them. This time we're going to give it a little different name. Let's say prototype might indicate that uh, it was ready to have a, a prototype made or maybe a, some kind of analysis done at some little more mature process. Looking at the items that were created for this, we've got three different item revisions, A, B, and C, with the drawings and other thumbnails showing here. We can look at the 3D model, and here we can see it with the hex in it. If we pick an older revision, you'll see just the, the flat model of it. We can look at the different data sets that were created. We have a drawing and a part data set holding the SOLIDWORKS parts. We have a PDF file that was automatically created of the drawing that's up to date. And as you saw, we have the JT file also created for each one of these. So all of this is created by the integration without having to do anything so that you know that this information is up to date and very easy to keep uh, visualized. The idea here is that all of the consumers using this stuff in Team Center can see it real easy. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a, an assembly here. And this assembly, again, we're going to kind of create that placeholder in Team Center for that, assign an item ID and a, give it a name. And just creating this assembly now as essentially it's got that one component in it in Team Center. Now we can do other things. What's kind of cool here is we can say insert model and what this brings up is the full ability to query information from Team Center. So we can search by item ID or any other kinds of the search mechanisms that are built into Team Center. Once we get what we need, we just click on insert and this puts it into the normal SOLIDWORKS insert mode. You can now see we've added that little, uh, little part over at the side there and it's added it to the uh, product structure shown on the left, as well as the Team Center view of that structure shown on the right. Both of these parts happen to have status on them. Okay, looking at the assembly, when we save it, you could see there that we're going to save just the assembly. The other two parts already exist. So we're just going to save this assembly, keep it checked out, so maybe we can make some more changes. So let's take a look and see what it looks like in Team Center. So as we've mentioned in Team Center, when you create things, uh, we create the view, bomb view of this particular assembly. And then you can view this in assembly as an assembly of JT files. So here we're going to see the assembly. We see both of the parts here in the assembly. In this case, they're both at the latest revision, but you can control what revision you're looking at of any of the components by using revision rules. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and insert another model into this assembly. Let's go grab a little, uh, another little part here, and we get a preview of it, and get to add that to the assembly, just to add something else in there. Okay. We can see that this part has no status on it. It actually is indicating that it's checked out by another user, and you can on this pop-up menu, you can see that it's checked out by a different uh, name there than mine. So you can clearly understand who has parts checked out, what status they're in, etc. So we're going to save that assembly again. Now we've added that other part. And now in Team Center, anybody looking at this assembly would be able to see that it has these three parts in it. Next, let's go ahead and add another uh, part here. In this case, we're going to add this 100 millimeter block as a mounting block and take a look at it here and then we can you know decide well maybe that's not exactly what I want let's see what other options we have in this case this block has different configurations for its length and size we'll change what configuration is used and now when we go to save this to team center it's going to recognize that we want to use the dash 150 option for that block and add that to the assembly so SWIM understands configurations. It also understands toolbox parts. It can manage both of those in assemblies as needed. 
Now we've created an assembly of all these parts. Again, we can take a look at that inside of uh, Team Center. After doing a quick refresh, we gave it a checkpoint status just to kind of lock it down a little bit. You can see the thumbnail images have been updated uh, as we've added more components. You can visualize this in Team Center, see what the structure looks like. In this case, we have uh, JT files for some of the components, but not all. But at least you can see what they look like and then decide you know, what you want to do at this point. Nice common representations so that both the Team Center consumer of the CAD data and the CAD folks are talking about the same thing. There are several icons on the panel here. There's also icons in the toolbar so that you can open information from Team Center, do a quick saves, save and modify various attributes, as well as save across all of the files. We also can cancel checkouts, uh, set attributes, change what project you're working on, etc. We can also do things to manage your the files on the operating system. In this case, we're going to go to the cache directory, select those files, and actually delete them from the cache. You can see there are other right model, uh, right mouse button options available to you as well as well, so you can configure this to do just what you need. 